This review took way too long to produce, in part because I was trying to substantiate some of the internet-based gnashing of the teeth about some of the features. And being the internet, a lot of that turned out to be grossly exaggerated. In terms of looks and feel, the iX12 is very much like the DX9 and a lot of the previous transmitters. The switches are pretty much laid out and work just like they always have. And yes, they have the sliders on the back. The rubberized grips give you a good feel and they also come over from the DX9. The iX12 also lets you adjust the sticks in several ways. We can adjust the up and down endpoints of the stick. We can also adjust the spring tension side to side or up and down. And if for some reason the stick feels off center, there's an adjustment for that too. So far my iX12 feels fine to me and I haven't adjusted none of this stuff. But I know it's there if I need it because I read the manual. The iX12 comes with a 6000 milliamp lithium ion battery. There are some out there that think this battery is way too small, but I think they're using the radio way too wrong. And we'll look at some of that in just a minute. New with the iX12 is a USB charging capability. That means when you screw up preparation during the week, you can charge the radio on a way to the field. Unless you're driving a Studebaker or something. One of the biggest knocks about the iX12 was its supported 2 minute startup time. And it does take 2 minutes for it to fully load. One of the things that really bothered me about this complaint was if you remember to turn the radio on while we're building the airplane, the radio's going to be ready way before we are. They do give you some graphics to watch while all this is going on. As the radio is starting, all of the features that actually control the airplane are almost immediately available. That all happens in the same amount of time it takes for a DX9 or the other radios to start up. It's the Android features that are responsible for the rest of the boot up time. My iX12 is bound to this airplane and it's the last one I flew. I'm going to start it up cold and not wait for the Android stuff to get going. I'll turn the plane on and I've got control of the plane already. The Android stuff is still loading but the radio controls the plane just like it did with the other versions. I've never needed to get the airplane in here this fast but I could do it if I needed to. It just makes way more sense to turn the radio on before I assemble a plane. Then we're both ready at the same time. When the radio is about halfway through the startup process, we get this screen. Then the air wire starts loading, and that's actually the interface that lets us adjust the plane. And that takes a minute or so to load. And when we get to the fancy looking screen, we can make all of the adjustments in it that we need to the airplane. New to the iX12 is this color touch screen. And this is probably the biggest power user in the radio. I've had a bunch of people say that the battery doesn't last very long with this radio. The touch screen is capable of drawing the battery down pretty quickly if you leave it on all of the time, but we don't need it on all of the time. When you're not making changes or adjusting the model, you just touch the power button once and the screen goes out. With the screen off, the power draw is very much like it was on a DX9 and other radios. When you need the screen to make some adjustments, touch the button again and there it is. Just keep in mind that there's hardly anything on this screen that we need when we're flying the airplane. Hit that button twice and you bring up the sleep mode which uses even less power. And you get to choose the things that you want the sleep mode to turn off. This is really simple but it's all explained in the manual. When it's asleep you can punch that button twice more and it wakes up. I know this all sounds easy enough but a lot of the people complaining about the battery life didn't even know that the iX12 would do this. Of course to know that you had to read the manual but where are you going to get that? Seeing as how the iX12 is sort of a little computer they actually put the manual right on board. It's not only handy, but you can update it also. The operating system the iX12 is very much like our cell phones. And it got apps. We can also open the manual through the Adobe Acrobat Reader. Also, like on our phones, you can adjust the size of the text to make it easier to read. And being a touch screen, you can scroll through the manual like we do on our phones. While they're making this a digital manual, they added a couple of features that are really nice. Scrolling with your finger and making the text bigger is just part of it. When you're in the index, you just find what you want to look at and touch that entry. And poof, it takes you right there. And remember, you can't forget the manual at home when you go to the field. And not having the reading glasses doesn't appear to be a real big problem either. When we try to make changes that affects how the plane flies, a little screen pulls up that forces us to make a long push to make sure we're serious about this. And it usually takes another long push to make that change permanent. And here's another computer based feature. We not only get to select what kind of warning we get when we change something like flight modes, we can also enter text to have it say what we want. And I'm not 100% convinced that this is a good idea. RC people being what they are, we're liable to have some radio saying some pretty strange things on the flight line. Like me. 
general landing. Just remember that there's other people around at the flying field, so you might want to be a little considerate with what you tell your radio to say. There's sometimes multiple screens available and you have to swipe from one to the other just to see if they're there. This is the built-in telemetry dashboard that we can arrange as we want. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but the telemetry is largely automatic in this radio. This dashboard lets us see what we want to see in real time. Of course, the main reason we buy this radio is to fly airplanes, and doing that is absolutely not any different from the other transmitters we've had from Spectrum. When I'm flying a plane, I can't tell if I got an IX-12 in my hand or a DX-9 or an 8 or a 6. Other than it being rock solid dependable since I got it, there's nothing different about flying this radio. And yes, that's good news.